What up, y'all? It's Alexis, Sophie Leather. All right, this video, we're gonna be making a radio holster, firefighter radio holster. I'm gonna show you how to do this. This is designed as was in the making for about two or three years. This is my final design. We're gonna, I'm gonna teach you how to build this today in this video. Um, it's a very unique design. I don't see any other design out there like it. Um, for those who don't know what this is, this goes on a radio strap for firefighters and this actual holster itself, okay? So this holster um, comes like this with this anti-sway strap. And of course, there's different ways you can modify it, but um, we're gonna go over the, just the main dimensions of this particular print, this pattern, and also some other ways of modifying it, the leather thickness and all that. We're gonna change the camera angles to go over that. But first, I wanna let you guys know that in the description below, uh, you're gonna need to download the pattern. All right, so download your pattern. This should be the first link up there in the description and in the first pinned comments, download the pattern. I said that multiple times. Um, you're gonna need that to follow along, number one. Number two, uh, I'm gonna assume that you have basic leather crafting skills. If you don't, I do have a leather crafting playlist um, on my channel, which I go over a whole bunch of stuff, gluing, stitching, everything. Everything you need, I go over it. Um, yeah, so, all right, without further ado, let's change the camera and go over some of the materials, the hardware needed, and some of the uh, nuances of this build, all right? All righty, so first, let me go over just the, the, the crude, uh, dimensions of this. So this scale is touching the bottom of this bucket here and you're looking like right at seven inches there. That's the, the height of that. The width is right at two and a half here, but on the actual bucket itself, you're looking at about three and a half there. And what else? The depth of this, this will literally fit 99% of the radios. It, it'll squeeze open about two inches, two and a half inches. I don't know if you can see that. Um, the other thing too, I'll show you in the build. If you have one of those radios with the extended battery, the long battery, I'll show you where on the print that you need to uh, modify it. Super easy, um, where you would modify it to make it a little bit deeper. Uh, make it, you know, somewhere around, I would say about eight and a half to nine inches will satisfy that, that radio. You know, that one long, one, that long, extra long battery. Um, so I'll show you where you would modify that on the print. So don't, don't you stress. Um, let's go over the hardware, uh, the special hardware, the hardware needed for this, and the leather thickness. Alrighty, you need one, one and a half inch D-ring, two one inch trigger snaps, two three eighths Chicago screws, one Sam Brown stud, quarter inch Sam Brown stud, and about two feet of some shock cord. This, I use a one eighth, but you can, you can use something a little more stout or you can use 550 cord. You can use 550 cord, or I like the shock cord because it has that springiness to it. All right, let's talk about the leather thickness. You can get away with using nine to 10 ounce leather. I use nine to 10 ounce leather to build this whole uh, contraption here, all nine to 10 ounce leather. I, I would not use anything thinner than nine ounces because this needs to be strong, all right? You don't want this to be all floppy and flippity flop, floppity floop floop, you know what I mean? Uh, you want it to be stoutity stout, moutity mout mout, not flippity floppity doo 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 doo. Okay, that's stupid. I'm not gonna edit it out. I'm gonna leave it in there. Yeah, one more thing. Uh, that hardware, I have a video uh, on my leather crafting tips playlist is firefighter hardware and where to find them. Check out that video. I also put a link right here. Um, it's a good resource. It tells you where to get all that hardware. All right, so let's look at all of our pieces for piece A. That's your piece A, okay? And that's basically this long piece. Piece A is basically this long piece. We're gonna assemble this here in a little bit, but that's that long piece, okay? All right, that is that long piece. Look at inside there, that's piece B. That's coming up next. So that's piece A there. Piece B, Bravo, is this one. That's Bravo right here. All right, that's the front of this. That's the front piece here. Then I, I'm pu I put this in order of assembly, by the way, which we'll do here in a second. Piece C, as in Charlie, that is this piece here. That's where the D-ring goes on the back, okay? 
And then you're looking at delta. That is this main strap here. This is delta. That's the piece that goes, that wraps around. It's actually called the wrap around piece. Uh, that's the scientific name for it. Then you have echo, which is this piece here. And that is the anti-sway strap. You just put the two trigger snaps on the ends of that. That's all that is. That is echo right there. And last but not least, least not, last but not least, fox trap, which is this. This is a shock cord, okay? The shock cord piece. And this is really self-explanatory. That is literally this piece right here. I make this thing so easy to assemble that you guys are gonna punch yourself in the face. You can be like, man, I've spent money on his template and I could have figured this out myself. But you guys love to support me and my family. That's why you're gonna buy the template. Um, yeah, that's, that's Fox Truck. So like I said, super easy. Now we're gonna assemble this um, and with a couple of caveats, okay? Piece alpha, all right? Remember the dimensions I talked about in the beginning? The length of this, the length of this on your print, okay? You extend it out as far as, 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 far as you want. So to raise, to make this two inches deeper or one inch deeper, you need to add two inches of this because you're looping it back on itself. I don't know if that makes sense. You just have to play with the total length of this but uh, the total length of this is where you would, you would add uh, to make this a little bit deeper. You just have to mess around to see what, what suits you, what's, what you like the best. But like I said, the way it is now fits 99.9% .9 of the uh, radials that are out there now. So when you do that and you extend it, don't mess with this. Just do this the same right here uh, on, the, on the print. Leave that the same. And everything else you keep the same. Make this the same. That's the only thing you change is the total length of this to adjust and make a, a bigger holster. A deeper one. All right. The other caveat to building this thing is I want to talk about um, your D-ring connectors right here. Okay. If you notice, if you guys do me a favor, go to print, go to print Charlie and Bravo. Okay. So Charlie, which is this one, that goes in the back here of Bravo when you assemble it. All right. Now, if you notice mine, on your print, these holes are in line. And the reason why I offset mine is because of this piece right here. If you notice, if you were to put it in line like the print says, you're gonna get really close to the edge there, unless you make this a square and don't, you don't have a radius. But if you, if you make it straight, like the way I have it on the print, this hole is gonna be really close to this arch. So a couple of things you can do, is don't make this back piece super round, make it square, or those two other holes on your, on your Charlie and on your Bravo, you can mark them like I did, but just come down a little bit. Put the holes maybe a quarter inch, not a quarter inch, but you know, an eighth or, a, yeah, about an eighth of an inch lower than what you marked. So you can offset it so it fits on this piece. I don't know if that makes any sense. That's one thing, you, that's the only thing you have to worry about. You see how it looks? when you weave it all through there. So, all right, let's assemble. You're gonna take Alpha and Bravo, and so have piece Alpha and, pe and piece Bravo out. We're gonna glue, all right? And the way we're gonna glue is we're gonna glue like this. We're gonna put it just like this. This side on the bottom, this side on the top, and we're gonna glue it right here. So what I usually do is take a, I put this here first, right? And I just take a pen, and I know that I have to glue all this, all right? So let me go ahead and glue that up, hold on. But you wanna come up kind of close to that line and then work your way out. You gotta use contact cement because you have to uh, make sure that this doesn't come apart. It's only gonna be held by the glue as well as <clears throat> two rivets or two rivets and two Chicago screws. So the glue is basically doing all the legwork. I have not had one of these come unglued. I mean, you're talking contact cement, okay? So glue both of these edges here. And uh, that's it for gluing. That's, 
that's, that's the only thing you're going to do as far as glue. We're going to let that sit and dry and uh, assemble it. All right, this is ready to glue. Um, if you notice, I only put the holes on your prints on pattern B here. And the reason why I do that is because if I were to do these holes on pattern B and on A, to line up these holes would be a nightmare. So what I chose to do is just do them on pattern B, these holes, and then after you glue it and you settle it in, then you just follow the holes. Uh, that gives you a better, a more professional looking radio, uh, holster because you're not trying to find, it's never gonna be perfect. Imagine we had to line up all you know, six of those holes. That'll be almost a nightmare. So I choose to just put the holes on pattern B, glue it, and when, once this glue is dry, once this, this piece right here is dry, we'll just take our hole punch and follow these holes to punch it all the way through. Way easier, it looks a lot more professional, especially when you're gonna weave um, your shock cord through like you know three layers of nine ounce. Uh, it's easier when they're, they just, they're perfect, you know? I don't know if that makes any sense. But, uh, so the reason why I do this first is because while this is drying, we can go ahead, bevel and burnish and get all of this nice and squared away while this is drying. So let's go ahead and bevel and burnish all of these right here. Nothing crazy, we're just beveling and burnishing um, these little pieces, the rest of the pieces, okay? Oh, I do wanna tell you one thing about, this is Echo, piece Echo, this is an anti-sway strap. From this hole to this hole, change that dimension on the blueprint if you wanna make it longer or shorter. These two holes from here to here are standard, that always is gonna stay the same. That, that goes around, loops on itself, and attaches to the actual trigger snap. But from this hole to this hole, on print Echo, that's gonna determine how long it's gonna be. All right, so do that. Also, I'm gonna go ahead and skive from this hole out a little bit. You don't have to, but it'll make your life a lot easier if you skive it, plus I have a cool skiving thing. I'm gonna skive it to make my life easier when I assemble. Skived, easier. Let's finish burnishing. Get these, the edges beveled and burnished the way you see fit. Uh, if you wanna put whatever coating you want on the edges, paint the edges, whatever. I do all that now, including your actual piece here. Um, sometimes there is glue that hits, that gets on these edges, so you could take a 150 grit sandpaper, or I'm gonna use this just to knock off some of that, and then I'll bevel and burnish this, and then uh, get the edges to where you like them and then we're gonna assemble. So let's go ahead and after I do this, we're gonna to go to the table and assemble it all. All righty, let's assemble this. All right, y'all, so there's one more thing I wanna tell you about. I have my pieces, by the way, I have my pieces here ready to go. We're gonna assemble. But if you look at piece F, uh, F like in Frank, um, the, the piece here um, for the shock cord, you notice on the print, it has a circle with an X and then a slit. And uh, you can do that manually by punching a hole and then creating a slit. Or you can go ahead and buy this, C.S. Osborne. It's called the Pippin Punch. Pippin Punch. Oh, come on, man. And this one is C.S. Osborne, and it's the number 1052. And from my understanding, you can buy this on Buckle Guy. Hold on. Just wanted to show you what that looks like. That's, that's F, like in Frank. That's what that punch is, okay? 
And that's that, OK? Um, also, on alpha, this can be a little confusing here to find out where to cut this punch. You can use a, a oblong punch is what I use. You can see what I wrote there, oblong punch. But it's almost easier to, uh, to come down half an inch from the top and half an inch from the side and start your oblong punch on the top right here. Um, it's just easier to do it that way. So I have my oblong punch, right? And what I'm saying is right here in this oblong punch, the top, this top right here, is half an inch from the top and half an inch from the side. That's a little easier to do than trying to do the math that's on the print, but that's up to you. I'm just giving you a little shortcut there. All right, anyway, uh, what else? All right, let's assemble this thing. All right, so first thing we do, this is Alpha and Bravo connected. Remember, we, we, um, we glued that, and you notice that it's not punched all the way through as I was talking about. So it's easier after it's glued and you got the edges done, then I just follow these holes and it comes out a lot cleaner and easier to assemble. So let's just punch those holes out. Um, by the way, all the holes on everything on this print is 5 30 seconds. I should have told you that earlier. 5 30 seconds punch on everything. 5 30 seconds punch. Okay. That hole there. You can do a 5 30 seconds, but I use an eighth. That is for the uh, Sam Brown stud. But you can use an eighth, but a 5 30 seconds works well as well. Works good as well. So now we have those holes punched. You look how clean it is all the way through. That's what you want. All right, so here we go, assembly time. Very first thing I do is take the A and B, which is connected, and we're going to take our Sam Brown. We're going to take our Sam Brown and we're going to assemble it. And what, we, what I usually do is take a, a drop of red Loctite, put it on the post, on the round part, and we're gonna put it in this little hole here on alpha, okay? Weave the screw through there. This is the outside, grain side, not the flesh side. And we're gonna put this little post right in there. Real simple, like that. Tighten it up a little bit, and now you have that post. Second thing we do is we're gonna go ahead and take piece, I think this is Charlie, Charlie side. Two rivets, weave the rivets through the top hole and this hole here, those two. Put the flat head out uh, towards the inside of the radio strap. Um, this way the radio it, does, it doesn't hinder the radio sliding in and out. You can use Chica Chicago screws here as well, but I like the, the flathead um, rivets. You can use uh, copper rivets or brass rivets. I'm using brass rivets. So you flip that. You're going to weave, weave them just like this. And you're going to hit the top one first, not the bottom one, because you have to put in your D-ring. But you can't, you can't hit this in without putting the other post in. Okay, the reason why is because this might rotate on you and you mash it down, it's not gonna look good. So I put the other post in just as a locator to stop it from moving around, okay? So put that in there, only do the top one first. Like I said, I have a playlist with tools and where to get all this stuff and what I use. Now we're going to use a D-ring and put it in here. And you're weaving that D-ring in there. OK, that's all you're doing. Just weaving that D-ring in there like that, OK? Nothing crazy. Now, something real quick. You can use a D-ring or you can use an O-ring. You can use a two-inch O-ring. You can use a inch and three quarter O-ring. I found that the inch and three quarter O-ring is better than the two inch. The two inch is really, really thick and it's a little bit too big. The inch and three quarter O-ring would be better. And the reason why you would use an O-ring instead of D-ring, because admittedly, this D-ring will sometimes wiggle out and you'll end up having your strap like this. Eventually it'll work its way through and end up like that, which is really not a big deal. 
or, or it'll be end up sideways like that, which is not a big deal. Um, it's only happened a couple times, and that is because this little piece here was a little spongier than I like, or uh, just it just got you know worked all the way as, all the way around. Not a big deal, but if you want to remedy that, use an O-ring, and you won't have that problem, obviously. So that's a preference thing. I know my specific radio strap, it got turned around, um, but you know, no big deal. It's still functional and uh, works just as good. But that's just a small detail. I'll leave that up to you. Um, but like I said, inch and three quarter O-ring is ideal versus the D-ring. Okay, so there's that. Uh, the next thing is we're going to take piece delta, I think it's delta, yeah, delta, and uh, we're going to weave this through here, but first we want to take our Chicago screws, our 3A Chicago screws, and you're going to put them in this way, uh, to, from the inside out, I don't know if you can see that, this is the back, you want your Chicago screws all the way in there, right? Now we're gonna we, we're gonna weave delta. Is it delta? Let me just double check here, guys. Is it delta? Before I punch myself, it is delta. We're taking delta and we're gonna weave it through like this, okay? Grain side, grain side, in, then back through here and out. Okay. And you're left with that. Pretty self-explanatory, correct? All right. Now, we're going to take our Chicago screws. We're going to put a drop of red, Loct red Loctite in each one of these. And all you're going to do, take your screw, pop it in there, flip it up, and put it into the screw, the post. And all I do is I just close it a little bit to get it started, and I do the other side. Take your mail, put it in that hole right there, flip it up, and put it in the post. And that is all she wrote, ladies. Now I can take the screw all the way down. 3 8 length is perfect, it's ideal, if you're using 9 ounce all the way through, even 10 ounce. Okay, and then right here you can tidy this up and you can still move it around and get it nice and fixed. And all we have left to do is to get our shock cord or 550 cord and you're looking at about, you know, 24 inches, two feet or so. Cut you two foot section, 20 inch section, two foot section, whatever, somewhere around there. You're gonna take your Foxtrot piece, your Foxtrot, you're gonna go in through here on one side, take the other end, in through here, and you're left with that, all right? You see that? Take the right side, weave it through the right side. Take the left side, weave it through the left side, all the way front and back. Pull this all the way out, and look what you're left with. This little piece that goes right over. And the way I deliver this, is I leave it tight like that, and I leave it untightened. So they can put their radio in, have this over, and then tighten this as tight as they want, and they could do a Beckett bend over this, or a granny knot, double granny, whatever. Beckett bend works the best on something back there, but I leave it untied, unknotted, so they can do what they want and make it as tight as they want. But that's why I like the shock cord over the 550 cord, because you can get it tight and it's kind of stretchy, you know? So that's done. All we have to do now is the anti-sway strap, and all we're literally gonna do is just rivet in these two, um, we're just gonna rivet these in. Yep, real simple. Hold on, I gotta.
There you have it. That is done. All right, let's go to my outro. All right, so there you have it. How you make a firefighter radial holster. Um, my proprietary design um, took me like two or three years to kind of figure this out. The easiest way to assemble, uh, the, the minimalist way of assembling a holster. It's modifiable, is that a word? I don't know, but I just made it up. You can modify it, make it longer. Um, even this part here, little caveats, this little part here that wraps around, if you have a radio that's a little tinier or smaller, you could shorten that a little bit, or you can make it bigger. So, but the main guts and the main foundation is right here. This, like I said, will fit 99.9% .9 of all radios out there. I do on occasion get a customer that didn't realize that they had the extended battery and they need this a little deeper. So like I said, Bravo, that, um, that um, blueprint on Bravo is you just extend it out, like I said, and you should be good to go. Without, I mean, yeah, that's about it. Um, yeah, that's all I got for you guys. If you guys like this kind of content, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and uh, yeah, check out my other playlist, leather crafting tips, and also um, check out uh, my other build along pattern, template pattern stuff. Um, other fire, I have other stuff. I have a lot of stuff on there. Check it out, all right? Bye. God bless you. Okay, I'm leaving. I'm really leaving now, you know what I mean. All right, bye.